Predating the Civil War were a number of smaller conflicts, county wars, and blood feuds. And I believe one of the most interesting was the Bleeding Kansas War. And the last and most brutal massacre to take place in this war happened here about 1,200 feet from the Missouri border. I'll explain more about how the Kansas War came to be, but this massacre took place when a Georgia native and a pro-slavery leader launched a raid into this area with about 30 men. Here in Rome, Georgia, we have the grave of George Peter Hamilton, brother and accomplice of war criminal Captain Charles Hamilton. Neither the Hamiltons nor any of their comrades left historians much reference for their massacres at Marie de Cine. All I've been able to dig up on his brother, Captain Charles, is that he put out ads in the paper calling for tough young men to move to Missouri. The message and context at the time between the lines was clear. Form a private army in that state and launch attacks and raids into Kansas to deter settlement by free staters. And the idea was pro-union people would set up camp here in Kansas and then vote to make it a free state. And then pro-slavery leaders would try to bring as much terror against these men as possible. So in comes this Georgia leader of the pro-slave faction, and they find 11 pro-union men, or anti-slave men, camped near to here. He captures them and starts taking them closer to the Missouri border, and most of them know who this guy is. And they don't figure, the pro-union guys, they don't figure they're about to be massacred. So they're led into a ravine, if you want to pan over there and show the location of it. And the Georgia native, actually raises the gun himself and fires the first shot. And he starts ordering his men to shoot, and all of the men except for one are shot. Now five are mortally injured, five die right there, and then one runs off into the hills, and it's from him that we have information about how this unfolded. Their activities before the massacre of May 19th, 1859, are poorly reported, but they must have been taking place as the Hamilton brothers are said to have had roughly 30 men all hailing from Georgia. On the fateful day of the massacre, they all converged on the town of Trading Post, now simply known as Marie de Cine. Again, we don't know their movements. Some reports say they were headed back to Missouri and simply happened across 11 abolitionists. Others say they staged in Missouri and launched a raid, which seems more likely because the massacre was barely inside the borders of bleeding Kansas. In any event, they found themselves in the possession of 11 free staters. Later inquiry would reveal that none of the men that they had captured had participated in any violence or had teamed up with John Brown. They were also just pacifists. They were simply there to claim the right to vote democratically as residents of that state and to vote along abolitionist lines. The private army must have realized their dilemma. They had no warrants and a sizable number of frontier anti-slavery activists were in their hands. So they decided to slaughter them. This must have come as a shock to the prisoners, particularly because Captain Hamilton was also known as a gentleman who usually refrained from violence like this. Because of this reputation, the prisoners obeyed orders to march into a natural ravine. The 30 or so men who held them were terrified when George's brother Charles raised his pistol and demanded they kill his prisoners. But at the threat of being shot themselves, they fired into the prisoners lying in the ditch, instantly killing five and wounding another five, while one was able to anticipate the violence about to take place and ran off into the woods. Immediately, it dawned on the Georgian army what they'd done, and the men ran to Missouri. Pro-slavery attitudes prevailed there, and one man was arrested, but that was it. The rest made their way back to Georgia as quickly as possible, where they were never pursued. John Brown, who absolute hero. He was a terrorist, but he was a great man. He came in a few weeks later and built a log cabin near to this house. And this is now called the Hadzel House because John Brown's friend later came here and bought property and constructed this house. So this house is left by John Brown's friend. Brown was in the area and he uh, led a few men into Missouri where he freed 11 slaves in retaliation for this massacre and he killed one person who opposed him. Now, the leader of the massacre here, he later returned to Georgia and he died a free man in 1880. And a little note to myself, I'm getting rocks from near to battlefields and this is at the Marie de Cine battlefield overlooking the house of John Brown's friend. 
I've tried in vain to find Captain Charles's grave, which is said to be in Macon's Rose Hill Cemetery, but no records beyond an old listing on family search could be found. George here died at the young age of 33, later in the year, 1859, himself a doctor, along with his brother. After the massacre was widely reported, Bleeding Kansas came to a screeching halt as both sides condemned the act. It's likely he was haunted for the rest of his short life, which didn't even last another year. It's worth noting how quickly George Hamilton died after the massacre. The massacre happened on May 19th, and he died on June 7th of the same year in Louisiana, likely a fugitive from justice. And on the right here is the father of the Hamilton brothers who were responsible for the Marie de Cine massacre in Kansas. You can see that he was a Freemason, as was his son, George, and also a doctor, same as his son. He was a Southern aristocrat in every sense of the word. Very wealthy, he had a practice on the courthouse square of Rome, a huge plantation, and had a large amount of sway in politics. However, he died only months after his two sons had committed the most widely publicized massacre in Bleeding Kansas, something which would almost end that conflict entirely and bring Bleeding Kansas truly into the fold of the American Civil War. And I wonder how he felt of his sons, because in all respects, he seemed like a buttoned up Southern gentleman, and his sons seemed like they wanted to go on an adventure in Kansas, which ended horribly for everybody involved. To see how far that this southern aristocracy went, look no further than the shadow of the graves of the father of the Hamilton brothers for the grave of Congressman John Lumpkin, who served in the 1830s for the state of Georgia. And this is the actual massacre site itself. The cabin was built a little ways away from here and just up the road about 20 feet is a little monument. And they call this a defile. It's kind of a geographic feature where the limestone runs between two hills in a creek passes through it. And up there you can see the monument. 